Hey guys, I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Welcome back to my channel where you can learn everything you ever wanted to or maybe didn't want to know about urology. Today, I'm going to react to an episode of Scrubs. So I used to watch Scrubs in medical school and prior to that, I completely had forgotten that there was actually a urologist on the show. So one of my friends reminded me of this. I'm going to react to her first appearance on the show. Make sure if you like what you see today to hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every Monday. All right, let's get to it. Mr. Peters, I know that having a gal urologist might seem a little uncomfortable, but the penis is just another excretory organ, so let's go ahead and take the stigma off it. Now, this is the length of the average penis. What? <laughs> that seems about right. Good for you. I was just messing with Dr. Dorian over there. You know what? I'm not talking to any of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you like oh my god oh so good so i'm so glad on scrubs that so many years ago they picked a female to be the urologist on the show that's really awesome as you may know there are only nine percent of women who are urologists in the country who are practicing urologists while there are more in training there's only nine percent of us also i don't really typically have this weird introduction like i'm a female urologist don't worry about it i'm just typically very professional and if patients ask me about being a female in urology or why i chose to be a urologist i'm happy to share that information but in reality it's not a big deal this is what we do every day it's our job as long as you feel comfortable seeing a female urologist that's fine and there's really no problem and there should be no difference in the care that you receive or the way you share information with us average penile length so what is the average penile length? It's definitely not about 11 inches, which she showed on that paper. There are a number of studies which have looked at the average penile length in different races. The most recent one that I could find looked at about 600 men in the UK, all Caucasian. They measured a number of dimensions of the penis based on the way it hung from the pubic bone and stretched. But I'll tell you the stretch length because I think that's the one that most people are actually measuring at home. <laughs> so this, the average stretch length was about 14 centimeters. And then if you look back at all the other studies that have looked at other races, anywhere between nine centimeters and 16 and a half centimeters. 11 inches, which is almost the length of an entire piece of paper, is about 27 centimeters. So what she showed there was about double the size of the normal penile length. And number two, the fact that JD went and looked under the covers of the patient to look at his genitalia, so unprofessional. That would not happen. So please don't feel worried that someone is gonna look under the covers without your permission or without your consent. Mr. Peters, I looked at your CT scan and I'm recommending that we don't do surgery. Great. This is goodbye for us, but I am leaving you in the very capable hands of Dr. John D. Dorian. <laughs> Take care. I gave you a new middle initial. It reassures patients for some reason. In my mind, the D stands for Dallas because I just got finished telling Mr. Peters that that's where I lost my virginity. Don't know how we got down that path. The something about that old man just makes me want to open up. Mm. Anyway, I hope you like your new initial. <laughs> So even though we're urologists and we take care of all sorts of intimate things with patients, we typically don't overshare about our own intimate or personal life. I think that's a little bit unprofessional. And again, I know they did this for comedy purposes. So you should feel completely comfortable sharing whatever you like with your urologist because we are required to keep it confidential. And that's the part of being an appropriate physician is keeping the information that you share with us confidential. And it may actually be pertinent to your care. So sometimes it is valuable to share certain types of things with your doctor and not hold back. Back. and you really should try to do your best but on the other hand I don't think most urologists are sharing where they lost their virginity or in what setting that was hey girl what are you doing want to get some coffee later and then the ultimate cox block hey why isn't mr. Peters in there getting surgery I decided against it yeah she thought it would be best if I treated him medically first of all nobody nobody's ever thought that ever secondly she's a cutter When's the last time you ever met a cutter who didn't want to cut? Laverne, you've been here 40 years now. You ever heard of such a thing? I'm gonna kill somebody. I guess we all get mad when people say things we don't want to hear. It's always good to hear the truth. Surgery is really the only thing that has a shot at curing this guy. And the reason that she's not going to do it is because he's older and he's got heart issues, which makes him high risk. And if he were to drop dead on her operating table, well, that would make her surgery stats go down. And that wouldn't look very good on a young doctor's resume, would it? Even if it means losing respect for someone you thought you might like. What can I say? You got me. Damn. 
that got real serious. As a urologist, we do surgery on patients who need it. And I think the hardest thing that a surgeon actually does need to learn is when it's appropriate not to do surgery. So we have to balance the risks and benefits of surgery. Are the benefits of surgery outweighing the risks? And in some patients, because they are not well, it's actually more dangerous for them to undergo anesthesia and potentially suffer the complications of anesthesia. And that's actually more harmful than undergoing surgery. Now, I don't know exactly what this guy's medical condition is because I didn't really elaborate on the episode. I would say as a urologist, I personally, and I think all the urologists I know would not only take care of patients that they think are going to have optimal outcomes, but they will take care of patients based on those benefits and risks and determine what's right for the patient. Sometimes urologists really doesn't have the capability to take care of a high-risk patient, and they might actually transfer them to a higher level of care because we might have better anesthesiology teams or ICU teams or other types of specialties that can help in the care of the patient. So that does happen at times, and that's completely normal and actually the right thing to do. Mm, that was nice. Thank you. That wasn't me. Hey, dudes. Don't hey dudes us. You know what bothers me? Non-threatening colloquial greetings? It bothers me that a doctor wouldn't help a patient so she could keep her stats up. Yeah. Look, JD, surgery is competitive. We do what we have to to get ahead. Well, my best friend here is a surgeon, and he would never pass on a risky surgery just to keep his stats up. Actually, I have done that. Everyone has. Oh, my God. Out of here. Dr. Cox, please weigh in. Well, it's no secret how I feel about surgeons. I hate them. I would liken them to rocks, but that would be an insult to rocks because, you see, at least rocks are useful to society. We build bridges with them. We throw them at guys who wear those tiny phones clipped to their heads. It's a phone. You can't do this. However, now back to the crux of the matter. Hit her, pair. <laughs> However, it is not Dr. Briggs' fault that she works in a broken system. Top hospitals are only interested in hiring surgeons who they think are flawless, newbie. That's not the answer you thought you were going to hear. But as always, I don't care. Thank God he didn't see this. <laughs> yeah, Mom, I was listening the whole time. I just couldn't talk. I don't think that this actually applies in real life. When I look for jobs, no one asks me about my stats or how I did. They do want to know how many surgeries you've done and what experience you have, but they're not necessarily looking at your stats. I do think in the future, however, they will start looking at insurance reimbursement based on how well our surgical outcomes are. And I think that that is a positive thing in many ways, but it does need to take into effect the kinds of patients we're treating. Then surgeons will probably stop operating on higher risk patients because they don't want to get dinged for having a bad outcome, when in reality, patients who have multiple comorbidities or who are less healthy than others will actually have a higher likelihood of having complications and that needs to be factored in. But again, this is not currently a thing and uh, probably will be happening in the future. But right now, I think as long as you're doing a good job and taking good care of patients, that's really what matters at the end of the day. And that's how I look at things. So I wasn't expecting this to be quite so serious, but thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something and please comment below if you have other episodes or TV shows that you'd like me to react to. And always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.